Hey, what is going on guys? RVZ Stealth here, and in today's video, we're going to be taking a look at the champions who get the most pentakills, or the champions with the best pentakill potential. So before I start the video, I just want to let you guys know that this is another stat-based video. I see a lot of people in my other stat-based videos comment down below saying that they disagree with a certain champion being on the list, or that the list is really crappy and they don't agree with it. But guys, this list is stat-based. You can can't really disagree with facts and you can't disagree with a stat based list. You can comment down below saying that you thought a certain champion would be on the list or that you didn't think a champion could be on the list, but since this video is stat based, you can't really disagree. So with that being said guys, let's get into the video. So starting off in the top lane here is going to be Darius. Now this one really should be no surprise here, or at least I wasn't really surprised to see him at this number one spot for top lane. Darius in a team fight can go absolutely crazy if he can get that first kill and get the ultimate reset. I think it was at Worlds last year, Balls ended up getting a pentakill on Darius, and I guess that just goes to show you that the champion is really strong if he can get ahead and he can get that first kill, because Balls really isn't a player that people think is very good and he's not really a player that you would expect to end up getting a pentakill um, but I guess Darius is just a really strong champion or he was a really strong champion at Worlds last year he still is a, like a fairly solid pick for the top lane and definitely does have very good pentakill potential now the two honorable mentions here for top lane are Yasuo and Kale. Now right now Yasuo, he's got one of the highest win rates for any champion in the game. I don't know what it is about the champion, but I just never get lucky with Yasuo players. Whenever I've got one on my team, they just feed and they just end up basically AFK split pushing the whole game and being pretty useless. But when they're on the enemy team, they just end up going off and they just carry team fights super hard. And I, I can definitely see like Yasuo in a team fight, if he does end up getting that nice AoE ultimate off and he kills like the AD carry or the enemy squishy targets, then that's like two or three kills right there. And if the tank if the tank champions are like trying to run away, then he could just finish them off for the pentakill. And as for Kale, once you do reach late game build Kale, her damage output is some of the best for any champion. What you basically just got to do with Kale is auto attack, and you'll see that the champions on this list are more, I guess you would say, easy to play champions. They aren't champions that have a whole lot of mechanical skill. And with Kale, you just have to auto attack the targets in team fights. And as long as you can stay alive and put your ultimate on yourself, then I can definitely see that being the reason why Kales do get more pentakills. Now moving over to the jungle now, it's going to be Master Yi. So Master Yi is very similar to Kale in the sense that he is one of the easier to play champions, or at least a lot of people would say that Master Yi is an easier jungler to play. And if you do end up getting full build Master Yi and you're very far ahead of the enemy team, it's really actually not that hard to get a pentakill. I definitely do see Yi's get more pentakills probably than any other champion in the game. And it's just because you just have to auto attack with the champion if you are far ahead of the uh, enemy team and you do have like your crit items you can just keep chasing the enemies down like with your ultimate so if you do end up like killing the high priority targets then it's not going to be very hard for you to finish off like the tank champions and end up getting that pentakill the two honorable mentions for jungle are Kha'Zix and Graves. So Kha'Zix, basically, he does have the reset on his E, which does make it pretty easy for him to go for those pentakills. If he does get the first kill, then he can hop onto the next target, pick them off, hop onto the next one. So I think Kha'Zix was one of the first champions that I actually ended up getting a pentakill with. I think I've only gotten maybe like three or four pentakills in my, in my time of playing League. I think I've played since Season 3, and Kha'Zix was as one of those champions I did end up getting a pentakill on. And as for Graves, his burst damage output once he does get a few items is just really crazy. If the enemy team is a fairly squishy team comp or like they're a full squishy team comp, if Graves does end up getting ahead of them, he can definitely have the potential to get that pentakill. As long as he can position well in team fights, he can stay pretty mobile with his E in those team fights. So it does allow him to definitely like dodge skill shots pretty easily and it does allow him to chase down those kills. So I think that just Graves has really really strong burst damage which does allow him to get more pentakills. 
At the number one spot here for mid lane is Katarina. Now like Darius, Katarina shouldn't really be a surprise here at this number one spot. If you do get that first kill in a team fight with Katarina, you do have your passive, which will allow you to reset your abilities. You can jump onto your next target, burst them down, and if you do have like a few items on Katarina, it's just so annoying to play against her because unless you do have a good CC lockdown ability, like an easy CC lockdown ability that you can use right when she jumps in, then she She's going to be able to clean up team fights really nicely. So someone like a Warwick or a Malzahar can do really well like against Katarina because when she jumps in and she tries to use your ultimate, then the Warwick just alts her or the Mouse just alts her, and then she's pretty useless. But if you don't have that on your team and you don't have a good lockdown ability, then she can just absolutely go off in team fights. The two honorable mentions here for the mid lane are Akali and Kassadin. So you'll notice that a lot of these champions on this list do have really strong mobility or they do have some sort of a reset. Now with Akali, you do have your ultimate charges that do reset when you get a kill so that just allows you to get that first kill hop onto the next target kill them and then just get another kill after that which could end up snowballing you into getting a pentakill now with cassidy it's pretty much the same like as akali you do have a three second cooldown gap closer with your ultimate and once you do get late game build cassidy it's really really hard to just pick him out or end up just killing the cassidy because his rift walk is on such a short cooldown and he, he can just keep jumping in, jumping out, and bursting down targets. So because all three of these mid lane champions do have some sort of a reset or they do have good gap closer abilities, they do have very strong pentakill potential. And just before we move on to the AD carries here, I want to point out that I won't be covering support champions in this video. The main reason is because there just aren't enough stats for pentakill per game averages for support champions. And also support champions really don't ever end up getting pentakill, so I won't be covering them in this video. So taking the number one spot here for AD carry is Jinx. Now Jinx is an AD carry like a lot of the other champions on this list who does have like some sort of a reset. Now with Jinx's passive, if you do end up getting that first kill in a team fight, it will allow you to chase down those targets and just end up picking off those low health targets and just end up getting that pentakill. I think that Jinx's passive is the main reason why she does have a really good pentakill potential. She can also do a lot of AOE damage in team fights with her fishbone so that is also another reason to why jinx does get the most pentakills for any ad carry now taking the honorable mentions here for ad carry are twitch and kogma now personally i thought that vane would make the top three vane is at the number five spot actually for ad carries the number four spot is tristana but the main reasons to why twitch and kogma do get more pentakills for twitch is because once you do reach late game twitch build his damage output is insane i'm pretty sure right now if the game does reach 40 to 45 minutes twitch has the highest win rate for any ad carry and it's just because all you need with twitch is basically two or three seconds in a team fight where you can pop off with your ultimate and just auto attack like this squishy targets in a team fight if you can get maybe like two or three autos off on those squishy targets then they're gonna be dead just because of the amount of damage that late game twitch does and also the fact that he does have the reset with his Q whenever he does get a kill he can use his Q he can go stealth again and he can just chase down targets after that so twitch just because he's a late game monster he does have really good pentakill potential and as for Kogma, his W is the main reason to why he does get more pentakills. His W does give him that percentage health damage, so it allows him to shred champions really well, especially the tank champions. The tank champions really can't even do too much against Kogma, especially if he does have like his W up and he does have Blade of the Ruined King. The amount of damage that he's going to do to even tanks is just absolutely crazy. As long as you can stay alive for at least like three or four seconds in a team fight as Kogma, your damage output is going to be really really good and you're probably going to be able to single-handedly carry a game as him if it does reach that mid to late game. 
So that is going to be all for this video guys. Be sure to let me know down in the comment section below of some champions that you thought were going to be on this list. Like I said before, I thought that Vayne would be at the number 2 spot or the number 3 spot for AD carry. She did take the number 5 spot though, which I guess that's still pretty good considering there's around like 20 or 25 AD carries in the game. But nevertheless guys, thanks for watching, I hope you all have an awesome day, and I will see you in my next video.